Welcome to N. Dot Mover Reviews number two, Two Guns. This movie tells the story of undercover DEA agent Robert Trench, known as Bobby, and undercover naval intelligence agent Michael Stigman, known as Stig, who are working together to take down a drug kingpin, Poppy Greco. Here's a quick teaser of how that goes. The bank was a setup. We gotta figure out whose money that was. Well, like we're working together? No, not like we're working. Yeah. No, like we're working in the same vicinity. Together. In the same area code. Together. So yes, when they decide to rob a bank with Poppy Greco's money in it, they wind up stealing a secret CIA stash instead. And yes, they were totally set up. Now they've got this shady CIA agent after them, and Poppy Greco wants the money too. And Stig's commanding officer betrayed him. And it's entirely possible that Bobby's control also betrayed him. So we've got quite a twisty road to travel with Bobby and Stig. Two Guns is absolutely a cop buddy movie. With Bobby and Stig at odds with different agendas, but having to team up for a common goal. I had never seen this movie before, and I can't remember exactly what brought me into it, though I'm guessing Mark Wahlberg playing a good guy who's undercover as a bad guy, and a lot of gunfights, as evidenced by this awesome poster. I love me a good gunfight, and that's one of many things I do enjoy about this movie. The banter between Stig and Bobby is right up there for me, too, especially in this scene where Bobby graciously corrects Stig's pronunciation of the word misanthrope, which, in case you're wondering, is a person who hates people. Honestly, their entire relationship works for me. Wahlberg and Washington play off each other beautifully, and I may give some credit for that to their improvisation. Collider did an interview with the two actors, and they confirmed a lot of improv was involved, including this scene where Stig stuffs a gun in a man's pants. This kind of in-the-moment actions and reactions can create a more believable scene. Moreover, I just enjoy how their relationship develops throughout the movie. Stig introduces the idea of my people pretty early in the movie. You're my people. Which Bobby originally rejects, but this idea continues throughout the movie. But I thought you were my people now. All right. Until Bobby finally accepts it as fact. Stig? Yeah? You're my people, right? That's correct. Allowing Stig to take it even further. We're not people, though. This makes us family. All right, brother. I really like how their relationship seems to organically grow throughout the movie, and I do believe at this point that they are indeed each other's people, so this ending is earned. Now, I'm from Texas, and like a stereotypical Texan, I do like guns, especially when they're used well and accurately, and this scene of stick popping heads off chickens does it for me. I mean, it's horrible in that the chickens are buried and the difficulty level is pretty low, Stick points it out pretty well himself. It's not very sporting, man. At least give the chickens a chance to shoot back. Nonetheless, his accuracy makes me happy. Also, he drives a hot car. According to Auto Foundry, it's a 1970 Dodge Challenger RT440, and boy howdy am I a sucker for a black Challenger. So Stick checks off some major boxes for me to qualify as a leading action man, which can be a deal breaker for this kind of movie. I also like that we actually get the scene promised by the poster. Wahlberg and Washington back to back shooting while money falls around them. I mean, you can't really beat that. Except maybe by this scene, which made me literally laugh out loud. Of course, there are some things about the movie I don't like, and they mostly revolve around the betrayal of government agencies. Now, I'm not a government agent, and have never been a government agent, so I can't say for sure, but there are elements that seem entirely ridiculous or ridiculously realistic that dent my enjoyment. First, on the entirely ridiculous side, Bobby is sleeping with his control, Deb. 
They had a previous relationship that Bobby sums up neatly here. Did you ever really love me? Huh? I really meant to love you. Now they meet occasionally in hotel rooms for a good time, but talk about a conflict of interest when you're responsible for sending your lover into life or death situations. Especially when that lover maybe broke your heart before, and maybe you're not entirely over that, or maybe you just want revenge. Yeah, remember when I said Deb may have betrayed Bobby earlier? Plus, the chain of command is not meant to sleep upwards or downwards, and I don't care how hush-hush it's supposed to be. The entire scenario just seems unprofessional, and sure, maybe it happens in real life, but in this movie, it doesn't work for me. The ridiculously realistic element is disheartening to me because I can't imagine this is how things are really done. Stick robbed a bank at the orders of his commanding officer, and he was supposed to kill Bobby after the deed was done so it couldn't be traced back to the Navy. He didn't kill Bobby, so now his commanding officer and the comrades he considered brothers try to kill him instead. On top of that, they frame him. So even if he escapes, his life is basically over. And this all happened because his commanding officer wanted the stolen money for himself, basically. Stig explains the situation to the Admiral, so his commanding officer is taken down and his reputation is restored. But here's the Admiral's response. Unfortunately, there's uh, nothing I can do for you. Well, of course, sir. I mean, you can just lock down the base. You can arrest Commander Quince. The United States Navy does not rob banks. Its personnel did not rob a bank. I'm not going to tarnish the integrity of the Navy over one crooked sailor. If there was money taken from the bank that was part of an illegal CIA slush fund, the Navy had no knowledge the fund existed. This, sir, this isn't right. Well, I'd offer more. But when the hand has gangrene, you chop it off to save the body. You don't keep the pinky around uh, just because it meant well. This entire scene depresses me because, like I said, I can see it happening like this in real life. I guess I like it in that it seems realistic, but it feels like a blow during the movie because it's just, what's next for these guys? How can they redeem themselves when the organization they're trying to redeem themselves for turn against them? Man, poor Stig and Bobby. Overall, there are major elements of this movie that I like and not all that many dislikes. And that leads me to wanting to watch this movie again. In Dot Movie Reviews rates two guns an A. But you tell me, would you keep it or delete it? Let me know in the comments below and tell me what about the movie lifted your heart or made you despise the entire industry. For more movie reviews, be sure to subscribe to In Dot Movie Reviews because remember, this is only two of 1,617 reviews to come.